consult for Abby's surgery, jaw surgery. 8 a.m., we have exactly one hour and two minutes to get there with traffic. It's only 30 minutes away, but it's gonna take an hour and two minutes, and now we have an hour and one minute until her appointment. Let's hope we can get there in time. kind of a synopsis later on. If anyone has ever wondered where, let me turn off my wipers here. If anyone has ever wondered where the Sleepless in Seattle house is, the houseboat, it is right in here. As soon as we kind of go around the corner here, you'll be able to see it. And just as a reference, we're literally like not even going 10 miles an hour. So we're kind of stuck in traffic. So if you can see the yellow and orange, house over there like what little blocks that is the house right there that's the houseboat that was in that movie all right take care okay goodbye all right I just got off the phone with my dad um here at home and then I was talking to Jason in the car on my way from dropping Abby off at school kind of giving them all the updates on Abby I am just so tickled and so pleased with how this doctor has handled Abby Personally, he is at Children's Hospital in Seattle, one of the best hospitals in my personal opinion. And my dad agrees with me. He did a lot of um, work with some inventions he had a long time ago. He did a lot of work with them um, and he lived in Utah, um, but he loves that hospital like so much. <laughs> And he's so glad that Abby's getting the care there. So this appointment for Abby was to make sure that she had recovered from her wisdom teeth surgery and then she had the four teeth um, extracted as well. Um, and, and then her braces on and the wires on and to make sure she was at a placement for her teeth in order to go forward with surgery this summer. So that's what this appointment was for. And she's all set for that. And he's going to call our orthodont, her Abby's orthodontist and verify. She has to get two more sets of wires put on the braces. Um, and that will align the teeth to the point that they need to be in order to do the surgery. And as long as she's lined up and time wise to have that done by midsummer, we can go forward and schedule that surgery for this summer. It's a month long recovery for her. And so we want her, he always does these um, surgeries. Her surgeon does these surgeries during the summer for these teenage kids because it's such a long process. They wouldn't be able to go to school at all. Like they're wired shut. They're on a liquid diet. They're in pain. Like there's no feasible way he would put people through the surgery during any kind of a school setting. Even adults, my, my brother who had the surgery and my niece had it. Um, they made sure that they were not in school. My brother's a teacher, a band teacher, so his mouth is his money ticket. And my niece is a ballerina. She's a, a dance performer. And so they made sure that both of them were out of school when they did this surgery for her. It's obviously genetic, <laughs> thanks to my family. It's a genetic process. Anyway, I just, I loved this doctor. He just talks to Abby. He gets to know her. What do you like to do? What job do you have? Do you snore at night? And she was like, why are you asking me if I snore at night? Why are you asking me if, I mean, he asked her like, do you sleep well at night? How many hours of sleep do you get? And she was like, well, these are weird questions. And she couldn't figure out in the beginning, like, why are you asking me these questions? And then we talked about like this scheduling wise and, and all that kind of stuff. Once they give the approval from the orthodontist, we will submit insurance um, to have this medically necessary to have the surgery. Once we get the approval from insurance, we can schedule the surgery and that's all great. And then we backtrack five weeks and we do the consult. Um, she will have CAT scans done and she will have more x-rays done for a final placement of where her jaw is at that point. And then the doctor takes those CAT, scan, CAT scans and images um, along with Abby's idea of what she wants 
her face to look like at the end of the surgery and he will come up with a CAD design of what her face will look like afterward. We will have a virtual call with him after that and he'll be able to show her this is what you might look like. What do you want to tweak? What do you want to adjust? Um, because this surgery is medically necessary, when you move the jaw, it alters the state of your face. And so you have to shift other things in order to get them all in the right place because you're moving such a big portion of your mouth you actually end up needing to move the nose, the cheekbones. Obviously, the jawbone is being moved. He was asking her about how well she sleeps at night because oftentimes with the jaw not being in the right place, your septum is not in the right place. And so you could have a deviated septum underneath your nose and that could be causing her to not be able to sleep at night. And he said, that's what we do with the CAT scan. We go in and analyze that and if in fact, I do need to go in and or he needs to go in and do that under the nose. He said, I want to skim the little bump on your nose, if you don't mind, because it's all in the same area and insurance covers it because it's medically necessary and it's fantastic. And she was like, oh, if you can do that, I would love that. And he said, okay, what else do you, and she I would be fine with me telling this. She just doesn't like to be on camera telling this. She also is very aware of the symmetry of her face because she loves to do her makeup. She knows that one side of her face is larger than the other. And part of that is because the jaw is not in the right set, in the right place. And the doctor told her that. He says, yep, that's one thing I observed, but I was wondering if you knew it too. And she said, yes. And one of my eyes is different size than my other eye. And he's like, I can't fix that. But yes, your face is disproportionate with the other side of the face and that's what I can adjust. He said if this side of the cheek and the cheekbone are bigger, I can adjust that and match it to the other side and then shave off that and then anyway, it just was fantastic to just talk through all that with him. We'll have a virtual call and he'll be able to like show us the images of what would happen, what it would look like and that'll be like a month, month and a half before surgery and so he'll be able to kind of adjust and like kind of figure that out. Fantastic. Uh, and then we were able to talk about her pain and her pain management. We've kind of learned as I've talked to my dad about pain and pain management, she can overlap Tylenol and ibuprofen and not have an overlap because we've realized uh, that she metabolizes pain meds so fast. Her body just metabolizes it and so she doesn't have an overlap in pain meds. It doesn't matter what she's taken unless she has a narc like when she had her wisdom teeth surgery and so as we talked to him about that he says yes I remember that um that was unfortunate that you had to get a narc so late at night we had to drive clear over to Seattle to get it from the pharmacy there because they're not going to prescribe a nar narcotic anywhere outside of children's hospital for that kind of thing and so and you had to have an adult you obviously like approved to come and get it. And he was like, I already like to keep my patients overnight. This is a big surgery. There's a lot going on and a lot can happen. And so I like to keep them overnight, which I was going to request. I was going to see if that was possible. And he was like, no, don't worry about that. Given Abby's pain, not tolerance, but her body's ability to handle pain and how well she can handle pain meds and how we manage that, I'm thinking I might even keep her two night. We'll see if she's fine the second day. We, we can maybe send her home. We also manage pain meds through IVs, which is so much easier in those first 24 to 48 hours, which I'm so I literally am so happy. That was my main question, is to get her the pain management necessary. I, it's gonna be a hard road for her, and she understands that, but I just wanna make sure she's being taken care of and, and that we can cut any pain we can possibly cut in the first 72 hours. Excellent plan. He fully understands everything that she's, you know, she's worried about, I'm worried about, and we even talked about, like, the anesthesiologist can insert pain meds that would lessen the need for a higher dose of narcotics so that we don't have like that addicting factor worry that you know if we're you know doing narcotics through an IV we don't want her to get addicted to that so we help with something during surgery to help you know decrease what she needs afterward it's just it's mind-blowing how well they think about this for children I mean there's a reason we are so glad that we're at Children's Hospital because they just it's all catered for children and they have this mindset that is different for children. And uh, I'm very excited. I'm not excited for her to be in pain and have to go through all this. It's gonna be a very hard month. And to have it be during the summer is also kind of sad too, cause she will lose a whole month of summer. But I'm hoping that she can at least 
I kind of want to set up a nice area in the backyard where she can go and lay in the sun and at least be able to like, she won't want to be in public because she'll be so swollen and so like wired shut, but give her a space with, that she can be outside and enjoy the sunshine until she feels a little bit better. Anyway, I also wanted to show you guys, make sure that this little name tag of mine doesn't have any um, private information on it. This is the picture. <laughs> I don't know if you're gonna be able to see this. We've been going to Children's Hospital now for over a year as we've worked through this process with Abby. So my picture was taken over a year ago. You guys, as bad as hospital photos of yourself can be, let me see if it, look at that. Look how chubby my face is compared to now. I, like I saw that today when they printed this out and Abby looked at it and she looked at me and she was like, holy cow, mom, there is a different. And I was like, there is. This is like my little, I mean, obviously I have videos as I've edited last year's videos and you know, I can see a difference from the videos itself, but that was kind of interesting to see today. I have an hour and a half until I have a three hour scan. <laughs> They, I don't know, uh, it's gonna be a long one, but I get paid more for it. So I have a three hour scan coming up, so I'm gonna go and edit this video, and then I have that scan, and then it's just mom taxi time. <laughs> so I'll be back with you then. All right, luckily I've edited <laughs> this entire day already. Um, I wanted to give you guys a quick update before I go to my scan. I finally, <sighs> I don't think it would have made a difference had I asked um, earlier than yesterday, but I asked my dad um, about my nails. Okay, that video went up today, so I've already started to reply to some of you. Um, so it's been a week since I kind of discovered the cuticle problem in maybe relation to acetone. And my dad thought when I told him about it, yeah, that's probably very true. I did do some over damage to it. So I told him all the things I had been doing, no cuticle oil for a month and then doing cuticle oil for like a couple weeks and nothing was changing, nothing was making it better. I have a fungal infection, <laughs> a fungal infection, wrong hand. Um, so that's what it is, that's what's wrong with it. And so he prescribed me, I can just get it at the store, but athlete's foot cream because it has the clomit, cl cl tri, tri, I don't even know, I don't even, I don't know how to say it. <laughs> and cortisone cream. This is for the itch, and this solved the itch problem immediately. I've had both of these on my hands. I put them on um, morning and night, so I did it last night and this morning, nine day. They no longer itch. Um, they didn't wake up more dry. It still is dry and flaky and gross, but it no longer kind of throbs. It wasn't more dry um, and they don't itch. And I don't have Band-Aids on them. I've had four Band-Aids on all four of these fingers all week long. I was able to take them off last night and put this on it and not need to put Band-Aids on. That is a plus in my book. He said it's gonna take me quite a while to get that to heal but to let it and keep using the um, cream on both hands because I'm transferring it back and forth. Um, your hands just automatically touch each other. <laughs> so even when you're washing hands, you're transferring it to the other hand, unfortunately. So I'm putting it on both hands, treating both of them as if they both have a problem. And I'm hoping they get feeling better. He said within, so by Thursday, today's Tuesday, he said by Thursday of this week, I will noticeably see a difference, like physically, like on the actual finger itself, um, I'll be able to see a difference. But the, the, the fungal infection can like stay underlying under the skin for quite a while and even in my nail bed. So that has to kind of grow out and then get rid of the infection. So I had to do it for a couple weeks. So I am off, but I'm gonna get my water. Abby drank all my water driving to the hospital today. Literally, I've had maybe eight ounces of water today and a Coke already. So I gotta drink this and go to my scan. For the next three hours, I'm gonna take a nap. Only problem is when they ask you to breathe, that kind of becomes a problem. <laughs> Thank you. 
well, if this isn't an honest prediction or a telling of how I feel right now, I don't know what is. I have lacked any motivation to do anything since I got home and I only had like an hour and a half or two before I have to go do what I'm doing now, taking the girls to their church activities. So I did nothing. I sat on the couch. I did nothing. <laughs> but I am going to end my night with you guys and then take them. Yes? You have a sweatshirt on the couch, Ash. I'm just gonna take them to the church and sit there and wait for them to be done. And then come home. And as Jason said, should we just go to bed at 8.30 or 9? <laughs> We're so tired. Anyway, I should probably start taking some vitamin D. I should probably start doing that. That might make me feel a little bit more rejuvenated. So, I'm gonna end our night with you. I feel really good about how our appointment went today with Abby and her doctor. I'm just tired. I'm hoping I have more motivation tomorrow. To walk? Because, yeah, I'm gonna walk when you're at cheer tomorrow night. Jeez, too many Christmas. That's just dry shampoo. That's hairspray. Yeah. Pfft. No, this is most good. You don't need hairspray. My goodness sakes, girl. I want my hair flat. That's disgusting. <laughs> what just flew out of her mouth? <laughs> that is so disgusting, girl. All it's right. also my last one. Oh, I thought they were already gone. All right, we're going to say goodnight to you guys. Take care. Um, send Abby your um, best wishes in the comments um, below. Give her all your thoughts as she, you know, thinks about this upcoming surgery. I know it's a couple months away, but... You know, I think we all internalize our own worries and our own anxieties and maybe your thoughts. Oh, we're blurry. We're blurry. Ashley getting in the camera. <laughs> it's making it want to focus on her. Um, anyway, I think it, maybe she would like to hear your comments yeah. and thoughts on for her as she prepares herself for surgery. Yes. And we're gonna say goodnight to you guys. I can do my toe touch now. You can do your toe touch? You I'm wanna show them? I can't fully do it like right now. Oh, well, but like, are you gonna show them? You try, so I can do it. try it. Well, I have to do it. No, I'm, we're doing it here. Right here? Do it, quick. I'm gonna hit the wall. Okay, well I don't know what you're trying to do. I told you. Okay, do it, do it, do it. So do it. <laughs> but, but you did it, okay? I have to do it again. Six. I wanna end this video. Okay. <laughs> okay, you're gonna fall and hurt yourself. All right, take care, you guys. We're gonna sign off. Good night. Thank you.